Hello, and thank you again for joining us on another episode of African Clawed Frogs for Beginners. Today, we're going to discuss making food for your frogs. For those of us who live in areas that have falls and winters, live foods become very scarce. In some cases, we are unable to purchase an overabundance of them because of storage, climate, lack of understanding on how to care for these live foods and other reasons imaginable. I know I have been to the local bait and tackle shop and even to the pet shop only to find out they are out of what I'm looking for. Disappointing as that is, there is nothing we can do to change the answer that we get. I try not to feed my frogs pellets, freeze-dried foods, or frozen foods because of the cleanup afterward. The possibility of bacteria or even the bloating of my frogs is not something I like dealing with, so I avoid those foods whenever possible. However, when the store is out of live foods, my frogs still have to eat. As far as one of the best foods, worms are a great part of an African clawed frog's diet. Red wigglers, or red worms as they are also known, fall into the earthworm category. The nutrient content of earthworms consists of 82% water, 11% protein, 3% fat, 2% fiber, and 1% ash. In the US, if you cannot find worms for sale in your area, check out Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Their page is chock full of information about composting as well as worms for sale. One of the awesomest people I know in the frog business suggested that maybe I should grow my own food for my frogs by indoor composting. At first I was reluctant because I was not sure if I could do something like that successfully. When he suggested it again, I thought I would give it a whirl and I did some research. Today, I will share with you what I've learned and maybe you can decide if this is something that may make life easier for you. Some of the things you will need when you're starting out is going to be a small countertop compost bin. You'll need some worms, shredded paper towels or newspaper, and some finely chopped lettuce to start. Hi everybody. All right, so to start your composter, you're gonna need some shredded paper towel, and pardon the snorting behind us, we don't own a pot belly pig, it's our chihuahua. Um, you need your worms. In this case, I have 100. There are 20 worms in each container, and there are five containers. And you will also need a compost bin, as well as some shredded lettuce or whatever food you want to give them that is worm friendly. I will include the best foods for them. Bananas are awesome. Bananas get them in the mood to create more worms. So that's just one example. First, you're gonna need to rinse out your composter. Okay, Uh, I already did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start lining the bottom with shredded paper towel. Then I'm going to wet my hand. carry some water over just to moisten the paper towel. Then you grab some dirt. I have a bag of dirt from other packs of worms that I've collected it from. And we're gonna go ahead and dump that into our composter. We're going to start opening our worms up but first I want to throw some lettuce in there so they can have a nice little meal and I'm just gonna dump the worms into the container and luckily they come in their own dirt so you won't have to worry about buying conditioned soil if you buy them from a bait and tackle shop 
We live next to a body of water, so that's why it's easier for us to find them. But in the winter time, when no one is really fishing, they're very difficult to come by. So this will help with my winter supply when they aren't for sale anywhere. And here's the last one. dump those in there and we'll add a little bit more lettuce so they have some food okay so this is what it looks like right now it's not very full but that's okay because eventually it will look like this composter and as you can see there's a bunch of worms in there and lettuce. So what they do is they eat whatever they're gonna eat, then they migrate to the bottom and they all meet up in the bottom. Since there's so many of them, some of them get together and mate and create more worms. Let's talk about this lid. The good thing about this composter is that it comes with a filtered lid. Um, the filter looks like that. It's a disc. And the good thing about it is that it keeps the smells in. So it keeps your compost from attracting fruit flies and any other things that are annoying to us. But that's a quick and easy way to start a composter in your kitchen so you can feed your frogs. If you feel you need a bigger composter, but don't think the pricing for one is fair, you can make one at home. The things you'll need for this kind of composter are three five gallon food grade buckets that have been thoroughly cleaned and dried or three unused hardware store buckets washed and make sure that you have a lid. One bucket is a top feeder bucket for compost. The next bucket is a drainage bucket and the last bucket will catch the drainage also known as compost tea which is a great fertilizer for your plants and gardens. Drill holes on the bottom of two buckets. The one that will be used to drain compost tea should only have holes that are the size of an eighth of an inch or one sixteenth of an inch. The top bucket can have holes that are three eighths of an inch. This is so the worms can migrate from area to area. When you stack the buckets, you will have two areas where the worms can be and one area where fluid can be captured. To make the lid, holes can be drilled onto the lid and some fine screening can be used to cover the holes to prevent worms from leaving the bucket while still allowing the airflow. For mine, I used the lid of my first compost bin to create a buffer for oxygen and it also contains a filter to keep any poor smells from coming out of the composting bin. Worm composting is a great way to keep your frogs fed as well as having a fun and interesting way of managing organic waste. While on the topic of organic waste, let's discuss what you should and should not throw in your worm bins. Worms enjoy melons, squash, bananas, strawberry, apples, grapes, plain cooked pasta, leafy greens, cardboard, and paper pulp egg cartons. The key to have the waste be eaten quickly is to chop it up as finely as you can. If you don't mind waiting for a while for the waste to uh, finally be processed, then you can just cut it into bigger pieces. Just understand that it's gonna be sitting there longer than if you cut it into small pieces. They can eat almost any organic thing. However, stay away from citrus fruits, 
onions, peppers, salty foods, meats, greasy foods, and dairy products. You can find lots of tips in the Uncle Jim's webpage. I have added it to the video description. They have many things to shop for as well. Check them out. They have a great customer service and their page provides great advice. Very interesting information. Thanks for tuning in. If you do decide to partake on this composting venture, please let us know how it's working out for you. If you enjoy our videos and would like to see more of our content, please give us a like and share our information with friends. For more pictures as well as fun videos, check out our Instagram and TikTok, also linked in the description. Thanks for joining us, and as always, have a frogtastic day.